And her research area is natural language programming, which is specifically text summarization. She has a PhD from Brown in machine learning, and she worked at Max Planck Institute um, as a research scientist prior to starting to work at Google. And she's going to fill in all the other blanks, right? Hi all, uh, very excited to be here. Actually, it's, these are pretty hard acts to follow, so I'm very nervous, so bear with me as I mumble through my slides. Um, I'll talk about automatic text summarization today and uh, the applications that we consider in Google for summarization. I'm a member of the research team in Zurich and uh, the projects that I'll be talking about uh, will be so, some I'm involved in, some uh, the rest of the members of the, mem the rest of the groups is involved in. So I would like to acknowledge already the members in the team. members of the team, and I should say, I feel really lucky that I'm seven out of eight, which is not a bad, bad ratio given the current situation, but we can definitely improve it, right? And we're hiring, so please do find me uh, to help us get to better ratios. Okay, so I'll give you a big, uh, a big picture about text summarization, the way I would like to view the problem, and go through some of the applications that we have, go along. So what is text summarization? It is uh, finding a concise representation of a text. And my favorite example about summarization is from Woody Allen. Uh, so all of us have to deal with uh, the large amounts of information out there. And what Woody Allen does is goes and takes speed reading uh, classes. And he goes, uh, he goes and reads War and Peace and he summarizes, summarizes it as involves Russia. So clearly, uh, concise representation is not the only goal in summarization. We should have a concise representation that also retains mo the most relevant information out there. So the summary here I took from uh, I took from Wikipedia, and it contains quite a lot of terms um, that could be as a, that could be interpreted as a, as a full summary of the uh, novel. Now, if we have relatively limited budget, uh, say in terms of time or words, we may not be able to capture all the relevant information. Then what happens is that the relevant bits of information. In order to deal with this problem, it can be very helpful if we have an aspect in mind to For example, if I'm interested in war novels, I might find technology. <laughs> I might I might find uh, the summary that it, that mentions the French uh, invasion of Russia and Napoleonic War is much more useful than the following one that emphasizes the aristocratic families, which can be useful for someone interested in social context, but not the novel wars. So well, what we see basically is that when you're providing a summary, keeping an aspect in mind can be useful. Now moving on to automatic text summarization, one ultimate goal could be argued is summarizing the web. Uh, we have huge amounts of information, we have an Im enormous amount of information out there and how to summarize it. And from the discussion before, you can argue that it, is Im it, can it would be useful to separate how to summarize the content and what are we summarizing for. The aspect can be very useful. And if you think about it, the search engines is exactly doing that. Given uh, a query by a user, the aspect that we were referring to or uh, summarize the whole content of the web uh, in, as a, as a one-page representation with the document titles and snippets where the documents are considered to be the most relevant with respect to some relevance measure. And how do we do that? We have, say, as in here, we have Marie Curie. It's PDF. 
is the way to go. <laughs> okay, I'm dropping this so that I don't do the. Say our career, our career is my career. Quick exchange. Okay. <laughs> Is the song off? Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the query is Marie Curie, and the search result what, that we would get would be uh, documents and their titles and some snippets from that. The way we do this is uh, take the query as a set of words, and we match them to the keywords that are in the document. This is how it is traditionally done. But now you can argue for many queries, uh, there's actually a richer representation. The Mary Cree is actually representing a real person in the world. It's referring to a real person in the world. So this combination of words is not capturing this richer meaning. And this is true for p people, places, things, objects in the real world, what we call as entities. So if we could capture this representation in the query, we can do a much better job in terms of summarizing. And a couple of years ago, Google, did exact, uh, Google introduced Knowledge Grab, which would do exactly this. Um, given a query, we map it to an entity, and then uh, we come up with this uh, knowledge panel uh, that would be served to you along with your standard search results that includes, that instantly provides some information that you may not ha have even asked for. For example, where, uh, the, her nationality or what she had discovered. In addition to this, we also provide some, some connections between entities. Her spouse or some people who have won the Nobel Prize before her. So having an entity representation can be actually very useful in order to provide relevant information to you quickly and also provide some more venues that you, you can uh, investigate, you can discover through your search. So the knowledge graph is an ever-growing database of structured knowledge, so it's not just a catalog of entities, but also defining attributes and, and connections between various entities. Now, okay, so uh, it may turn out that just as there's so much ambiguity in the world, it may turn out that your, your query might be also ambiguous, not only in terms of words, but also in terms of entities. For example, if you're searching for Bush, it might be referring to the uh, politician, the singer, or the, the, uh, the band. And once you specify the right thing, we can actually give you much more detailed information. This is really exciting and well, uh, having an entity-centric uh, knowledge base, but it's just one of the efforts uh, to, to be establishing semantic web. Is the machines that we access the information, that we serve the web, get smaller, we need to be thinking about more precise, smaller uh, summaries of the information that you're looking for. Uh, and in order to capture that, at least as a small step within our team, what we have been thinking about is entity-centric summarization of the content as well. So we don't just we, we don't want to just show you documents and their snippets, but really collect the documents that are talking about the same thing, and provide you one or two sentences that con that retains the information that is common between them. And because there's so much uh, diversity in the content of the web, uh, in terms of style, in terms of quality, what we would like to what we decided to start from is news, which is an edited content. Um, in, in general has better quality. And we will focus on news that are corresponding to events um, so that we can actually give you, a m so the events would be something that would capture most of your attention, let's say, that are newsworthy. Now, um, okay, so our goal in the team is doing entity-centric summarization. What it means is that finding relevant, most relevant information with respect to an entity. And in order to do that, what we need is our documents that are annotated with references to entities. 
Once we have that, we collect documents that are talking about the same thing, which we believe that they're, they're talking about the same thing. We get a collection of documents now. We will analyze these documents in order to capture the common information that are presented in them. And we will start extracting the sentences that are mentioning these common information. So this would be the, in the um, uh, document summarization terminology, these would be the extractive summaries. This is exciting, but we would like to push this a little bit further. Can we actually, instead of selecting sentences from the documents, can we actually start generating them? Can we provide new information? This would be the abstractive summarization. Um, and I'll talk about some examples of these projects. Uh, and so document summarization and many, many of the problems that I'll be mentioning here are very well established uh, NLP, natural language processing problems, and there's large amount of information out there uh, and large amount of studies uh, uh, that are done on these topics. Here, what we would like to do is also go a little bit beyond the academic definition of summarization. So generate summaries not only for the, for the users, uh, but users' consumption, but also for machines, machine consumptions. So this is overall our group's uh, motto about uh, text summarization. So I would like to start delving into some of the applications. The first one we had was, we started working on was NTT timelines. Imagine you're, you were lucky to be offline for six months and you come back to the real world and try to figure out what happened um, about one particular entity, what happened in Turkey in the last three months, uh, six months, three months. Or you have discovered some new entity and you would like to find out what are the important aspects of this entity, not in, only in terms of the information, the factual information, but also about the news. What, what are the important events about this entity? So this is what, what we call the entity timelines. Given an entity in a time period, provide as a summary of most memorable events involving an entity. Uh, going back to the Bush example, um, so again, Bush is very, very ambiguated, disambi disambiguous. Even if we provide some information, so Bush bend, uh, in, in the search results we, we do get um, disambiguated results. All the news here are about the, the bush, the bend. Uh, but now, actually, if you start looking at the news, we don't do so well currently. We still, we capture some news from uh, Christian Bush and some, some Prince's bend that has some bush terminology in there. So we would like to make this better. And how do we approach this problem? Uh, what we start from is a collection of documents that we believe that are similar to each other and that were published around the, the same time uh, by various sources. So the assumption I here is that if we have such a collection, th this set of news will be talking about one main event. It would be talking about some, some, some smaller events, but, but the, the main event there is, is going to be common among all these documents. And we would like to capture this redundancy in the documents to find out what is actually important. So the uh, methodology that we use is actually fairly simple. Given an entity, we identify what are the important news collections in our terminology events uh, that this entity was involved in or it was about. And we're going to rank these collections into, with respect to some importance criteria, where we look at the prominence of the collection or the prominence of entity in the collection. And we'll, we will provide a set of sentences that is representing the common information within these documents. An example here is Bush, the band now. Uh, what we, we see is that, okay, Bush, Apparently it existed and they, they had been dissolved, but then they announced their reunion and then they announced their first album's release after 10 years, etc. And if you're more interested, we can, we can also provide you a summary now. So imagine opening up your, your, um, uh, your smartphone and actually getting this information in a, in a very precise man, uh, concise manner. So we believe that the, this is a way to go to, to 
a, a, a starting point to start summarizing the content around, um, around entities. Okay, but is this enough? Can we start pushing this forward? Uh, can we actually, instead of giving you a set of events that are important for the entity, can we actually provide you some background information about an event? Then we can provide much more structured timelines. So this is, this is what we call the storylines of an event, identifying and summarizing the events that lead to, uh, to a, a, an event of interest. Again, we start with news collections. We have the same assumption as before. Uh, that the, the news corresponding to, uh, that belong to the same collection are going to be talking about the same event. What we do is we define a similarity representation over, we define a feature representation over the news and define a graph of events. And identify, given a new event now, identify the, the best path that would lead to this event and summarize the event along these paths. So we would be building a graph of this sort where we have e each node in the graph would be corresponding to a new collection. Uh, say uh, events happening on Syria and then also the previous events that are leading to this story. A As in here, say, say you're not aware of what had been going on in Turkey in the couple of months, um, in the last couple of months, but you hear that, okay, in Turkey, some uh, nine people got arrested over Gezi protests. We, you don't know where it is from. Now you start reading on the uh, background of the news, on the background of the event. Okay. Uh, till now, I've been talking about uh, extractive summarization. So we had been looking for sentences within the document collection that would be representative of the events. Now, it might turn out that these sentences may, may not be complying with your budget criteria. They may end up being longer um, for, for your budget. Um, so this, again, a very well established uh, research field in NLP you can start investigating sentence compression. Uh, the task here is given a sentence, generate shorter sentences by, by, while preserving the most essential information. Now, what al this allows you to do is to move beyond extractive summarization and start uh, generating sentences. And this is a very challenging research problem. People have been looking at this for a very long time. Uh, the one difficulty is that there are no large public data collections out there. And with a colleague of mine, um, what we started thinking about was, okay, we have a large collection of news. What, could we extract actually some, something from, from this news collection? One clear idea, one very simple idea is that if we were to look at the title of the, the, uh, the news, you, you would think that it would be a good representation of what the article is talking about. And also, the first sentence of the article usually represents, again, uh, the, uh, what, what the event is about in a more, in a, uh, in a longer manner. So then you can think that actually the first, uh, the, the, tit the title of the article is actually the, a compression of the first sentence of the article. It turns out it's not exactly the same. You have a lot of variations in terms of the, the lexicalization. You can have verbs represented as nouns or you can start using different terms, uh, different words representing exactly the same thing. So it is not as clear as that. What we said was, okay, even if we cannot uh, use titles as the, com uh, as the compression of the sentences, can we actually get a projection of the uh, title into the first sentence? Can we construct a pseudo uh, compression sentences by looking into the overlap between the titles in the sentence, first sentences? And it turns out that this is actually not such a bad idea. What you get is noisy, but a large amount of information, a, a, a large amount of labeled data 
uh, that you extract automatically. And I'm very proud to say that we're actually going to be releasing this data and hopefully you won't have to date any of us in order to be able to use that. <laughs> um, so once you have that, uh, as in the standard literature, we can s uh, use syntactic information as well as semantic and lexical information to extract the essential content of the sentences, uh, the essential content of a sentence in order to find a compression of the, uh, of the longer sentence. This is just an example of uh, how our data would be looking like. So the original headline of the news is three men arrested in connection with bank robbery. And the first sentence, you see a lot of overlap. You see, um, you see the arrested and arrests and uh, bank robbery, uh, but there is no one perfect sentence that is the pr projection of, of uh, the title into the first sentence. So what we do is we find a mapping of the important bits in the original headline into the first sentence and generate our own um, pseudo headline. And we use this as a training data. Okay, so this is about the compression. Um, so in compression, I, I, I said that we are using the syntactic information and some lexical information, but there is really not a deep understanding of what the sentence is actually talking about. If we could capture that, that would be an ideal scenario of uh, sentence compression. It would be an ideal tool for question answering or summarization or anything. Uh, we had not been doing that, but we are just starting now uh, in order to investigate uh, the event understanding aspect. Obviously from an intellectual and academic perspective, having an event understanding or understanding the deep semantic analysis of the content is very challenging, uh, is very exciting. But you should also motivate this for, from a more product perspective. And one uh, example of this is that there are so many domains where if we're going to present a headline uh, or a sentence, we should be able to, uh, that sentence should be objective. It should not, it should not be presenting any sub, uh, subjective information. And it turns out in some domains such as celebrities or sports, you don't see that much subjective, uh, you see a lot of subjectivity in the headline. So you can get sexy uh, terminology and, uh, you know, if you read through them, these may not be an ideal summary for an event. Uh, and what you would like to say here is actually that somebody has married someone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in this case, extractive summarization, selecting sentences from your documents is not, an, uh, is not really suitable for us. So instead, what we would like to do is to identify that there was an event here, it was a marriage event, and it happened between these two people. Um, what that means is really learning, to under, uh, learning how events are represented within text, and then uh, given a new mention now, given a new text, find the, repre uh, find the mentions of that event uh, within a predicate argument structure, let's say. Um, in a logical form or it can actually be pretty much any, any uh, formalism that you would be happy with. Uh, the one problem here is that you just don't have uh, training data in order to be able to do that. You have, uh, there, there are various methodologies in order to find noisy labeled data, but the, the training data for, for this task is very limited in an open domain. Uh, in an open domain event relation. So we have to consider this uh, as a unsupervised learning problem. And I already said that we don't want to be restricting ourselves to some particular domains. Now, what can we do with this if we had a, uh, if we had a uh, event understanding framework? We could start doing abstractive summarization. We could actually generate new headlines. But we could also go back to the knowledge graph that we had started from and start annotating, uh, 
providing updates for it. It might turn out to be noisy, so we might resort to uh, semi-automatic updates, but this, is, this can be very valuable for, for, um, for knowledge graphs where it is very important to be up to date. Otherwise, your, your, your knowledge base becomes stale and really useless. Okay, so how do we do this? We have the similar assumptions as before. We start with uh, news published around the same domain. Uh, and we believe that the news is talking about the main event. What we do is look into the first and title sentences that are involving uh, uh, the same set of entities, and we will extract some patterns from them. How, how are the events represented within these sentences? And if we believe that the documents are really talking about this one particular event, these are really rewrites of the same event in different manners. So extract compressed patterns uh, between the entities and then cluster them to that refer to the same event. It would look like something like this. Uh, I have two news collections here. They're, they are both about marriage, but involved, uh, uh, different entities are involved in this marriage event. So between the, the entities, we extract patterns like weds, has married, uh, ties the nut, along with some, some maybe not so informative patterns such as uh, X and Y are a hot family. So if we aggregate over many news collections like this, we would hope that this, these subjective, uninformative, or no noisy patterns could go away. But what we would be capturing is a married event can be represented with patterns like weds has been married, ties to, and the other noisy ones do drop out. And it turns out this is not such a bad idea. So if we were to look at some headline examples of, uh, of some actress here uh, getting engaged, we can generate some new headlines that were not necessarily in the data and the, that they're representative of the event. Okay, so I've been talking about mostly news because to be honest, news is a much easier domain than any, any other uh, domain. Uh, so in NLP, people have been uh, working on different annotation tools for, uh, for semantic, syntactic uh, information, but mostly by training on data that, uh, on training on labeled data based on news. So, uh, Wall Street Journal is one of the best examples where parsing has been uh, beaten to death. So it becomes very hard to, to, to be analyzing non-news data. So we just started scratching the surface of um, different domains now. We're lo we started looking into user-generated content, and we know that there's huge amount, uh, the, the volume is huge there, and it's very noisy, very unstructured, mostly ungrammatical. Uh, but in, if you look at all this information in an aggregate, you can actually capture, capture some, some commonalities in there. So here, our goal is to identify the main aspects and summarize them for user or machine consumption. Because the data is very uh, ungrammatical to begin with, it may not look so nice to uh, as a, for, for user consumption, but machine consumption can be very promising here. So what we have done is to use a centrality uh, summarization model to summarize the comments on YouTube videos. Uh, and we use this in video categorization. Uh, and I'll give you an example how this works out. So we have videos, we have the uh, uh, meta information about the videos. If you were to analyze uh, the meta information here, you would be likely to say that this video is about phones. But if you were to start looking at the, the comments now, you can capture uh, some different examples. Let me just play you the video. Um, ah, all right. Uh, so it's really about some guys uh, shooting basketballs. Uh, so for some reason, uh, it is annotated with iPhones and Android and iPad because actually the, it's an advertisement. 
but annotating this as iPhone may not be such an ideal scenario when, when the user is lo looking for videos about basketball, for example. Uh, so <laughs> analyzing the comments, what we see is that we can start uh, capturing that the video is not only about, uh, the video is actually about baseball. Basketball, oh, excuse me. <laughs> it would have been bad. <laughs> okay, uh, so actually that is pretty much it for my talk. Uh, I think I'm running out of time, so I'll, ju I'll just wrap up and perhaps we, we can keep it on the background uh, if we have any questions. Okay, so I talked about uh, entity-centric entity summarization, extractive and abstractive, uh, both for machine and user consumption. Um, but these are really just tiny steps moving onward to some more semantic representation to in, in, uh, include semantics into, into uh, search. Uh, in an ideal world, we, would, we should be capturing much more structure. For example, uh, one of the immediate pr plans for our group is combining the storyline idea with the event reasoning model uh, in order to say what kind of events, what are the relationship between events? If celebrities uh, are married, are they more likely to get divorced than real people, for example. Um, and we hope to do much more on user-generated content. But basically, uh, we had uh, some, some uh, decades ago, we had started from um, a good old AI and we dropped it for, for st uh, statistic me statistical methods. And I think now, we, we can start actually combining these two together. We, we have the, the content and uh, the methods for, to be able to do that. Thank you. <laughs> One question, if you have any. Something you mentioned in your presentation, actually I'm very interested about, but I'm not an expert. I just ask if I make a mistake, please correct me. So you mentioned that uh, you have some uh, data, then when you produce, uh, for example, on the news uh, general uh, application, then you found that actually algorithm was not uh, uh, well performed because you found some noisy patterns. So I'm thinking, okay, you run the algorithm, then you have some uh, noisy patterns, so it decreased the performance of the algorithm. But actually, algorithm was based on the mathematics models. So, but the noisy pattern may be from user perception point of view. For example, they don't think it's bad, you know? It's especially when news, they are very well gram uh, grammatical. Yeah, so I think if you say act A married with act B, or you say act A with act B, from user point of view, they don't see the ex difference, but from an algorithm point of view, it might be one sentence could be the noisy pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it may be good to develop how user to look at the noisy pattern. Maybe the noise pattern could be tolerant. Absolutely, that's a great idea. The one problem though is that we, we can extract millions of patterns, right? So what is the good use of, of a user's time? Uh, so we personally, in the group, we might choose to say, okay, what are these patterns corresponding to, uh, to get a label of the clusters that, or the events that we, we extract. But absolutely, that can be uh, as well done. Uh, well, thank you all. Hi. Uh, while we're changing over here, I have an announcement to make. I, I feel like I must have done a really good job this morning since I've been asked to make more announcements now. Okay, um, as you know, our sponsors generously provide